The Data Cloud Diaries, mapping the party to prepare for identity resolution. As we dive deeper into Data Cloud, we're gonna be working on the steps for coming up with the unified individual, that single instance of a person, regardless of some of the duplication they may show up. So to do that, we're taking a look at the mapping for the sample file, and we're talking about how to build the party object to come up with preparing for the identity resolution. Now, as we take a look, at, there's some good information in one of the trailheads, learning objectives, and this is data identity in the data cloud. And we're talking about mapping the required objects. So we're looking at um, key elements for the data model, the DMOs, bringing in the data and the importance of the data, and we're focusing on the individual object. So I have shown you how I have mapped both from contact out of the box accounts, I mean a contacts, and my custom pilot object into the individual object. Now we're gonna be looking at is how we need to enhance that for data such as the contact point objects. These are the related data that could be held about people from, I don't have the address, but I have emails and phones. And this is showing us how we've mapped this data in and a key element across these is called the party object. So the party identification object is an important one that allows you to match across identification numbers. And it has some key fields. It has its own individual ID, party identification ID, and the foreign key. But it also has the identification number, the identification name, and the identification type. And so the identification type is a general category, which might say, you know, is it social? Is it something, what kind of ID? Then the identification name gets into the actual field name that you're calling it. And I'll be showing you in my data. And then you put in the identification number. And then you're gonna be mapping. This could be such as identification number, driver's license, California driver's license is the identification name, going to identification number. So now I have some simple data we've been using and I'm just gonna show you how I've enhanced it. So let's come in here. We're gonna come and we're gonna to go to our data lake objects and the gen pilot. Now in the gen pilot, we had to add some additional fields for some of the mappings. And what I did was we had the data, we're gonna go back to the data stream. Here's the pilot. And you're able to add formula fields. And I'm gonna show you a couple of formula fields I added in order to facilitate this. So first, we needed some constants. Here is um, a field that we're gonna map from. So I created a field called pilot ID type, which is person identification. So this is the general field for a person identification. And what we're doing here is we're creating a formula, but it's a formula with a fixed string. And then I've, I can test this and it's returning the fixed string. So that is the first one I added. Now I wanted a more a detailed field. So I had pilot ID. So this goes from that sample of driver's license to California driver's license. We now have personal identification down to pilot ID. This returns just a simple pilot ID. So these are here for my mappings, but I've added the pilot ID type and the pilot ID name. Now in my data, I had had just simple values and I can show that to you by going to the Data Explorer. We'll go to Steve TechArc. We're gonna go take a look at the Data Lake object and we're gonna go take a look at the Amazon pilot data. And what we had right here is we're gonna edit the columns. And you can see right here in the Data Explorer that our pilot ref is a number A and a sequential number. So this is going to be the field they're gonna be used to represent the pilot. But we may have some duplicates and that's what we're gonna be building for in the party object is to do duplicate identification. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our mappings and see how we've enhanced our mappings. So we're looking at the mappings of the sample data and what we've got is the contact point email. We have mapped the email address. We brought in the primary key and we've also added party here. So we have the party from the primary key here mapped. The contact point phone. We have the contact point phone 
Now I've also added the E164 phone number for common formatting. And you'll see that we have the party and the telephone number. We've been mapping the first name and last name and the individual ID from the simple file. But what's also been added is we created a party identification. So this party identification is gonna be the identification name, the identification number, and the party identification name. So let's go take a quick look at the trailhead for a little clarification. So in this trailhead, you'll notice that coming down into the party object, in first on the contact point phone, so we're gonna have the party, the formatted phone, on the email, the party, and the email address. Um, and I haven't yet mapped the address, the physical address. But when you get to party, this is your primary ID, this is your ID for the party, foreign key. Now you have a high level a description in your identification name and the custom descriptors. But here are gonna be the fields, party identification, identification name, number, party, and identification type. So if we come back over to here, you'll see that I've mapped to the name, the number, the party, the party identification ID, and the party identification type. And I've tapped into those additional fields that I've added to give me those flag descriptors for, um, for those fields. So let's take a look at this data. We're gonna look at it um, first in the Data Explorer. We're gonna take a look at contact point, this mapping from the Gen Pilot into the contact point email. And what we can do is go to our Data Explorer and we're gonna pick, so from here you can pick your space. I'm gonna pick the object, data model, and then I'm gonna pick the contact point email. And this allows me to see the data as it's been brought in. So what we now have is we now have the email addresses have been brought in and the party you'll see is that um, pilot ID. So this data has made it into this standard object, the contact point email. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to the contact point phone. And we can take a look and we can see that we're getting in the phone numbers, both in the original format, the telephone number, and in the formatted E164 format, which will allow us the matching and there's our party ID. And so you can see that we're populating this data for email, for phone. And a really nice thing you can do is you can copy your SQL. Let's hold it here. And I've shown that if we can go into Post Postman. So here's Postman from a previous video. I'm gonna authenticate. So here's my authentication headers. So I'm gonna do the body and I'll have my username and password. And now I've authenticated and then you take your authentication because I'm using a um, data space, I need to then exchange this for a token. So I have my data space is Steve Tech Arc, but I'm gonna swap my Salesforce token for a data cloud token, hit send. And now you'll see I get a much bigger token. It's a, I think it's a JWT token. Yeah, there it is, a JWT bearer token. And now I can go to a direct query. And all I have to do is go to my header and in my authorization, put bearer and put my big old JWT token in here. And let's look at this body. This is just a si simple SQL statement. And the power is I can be in my um, data explorer here, which limits me to 100, but I can come copy this back to Postman and paste it in and now I can execute the same commands. Now what's powerful is now I can start running even more. I can remove the limit of 100. And then what Salesforce will do through the Postman is it'll give me 100 at a time, but I can query more through additional batches. So here you can see my data coming across. The only thing that's blank is the internal organization and some of the key KQ identifiers. But I now have the ability to query my data see it in both the phone and the formatted 164 phone. So you can view your data either directly through the Data Explorer, knowing you have the 10 column limit and the 100 record limit, or you can also come in through Postman and run your own SQL statement um, 
and hit the data in a paginated way. And I've shown that in other previous videos. But to, to summarize for today, we have our data stream for Gen Pilot. We have its mappings. The data stream maps to the data lake. And we just did a single one from, and here's our mapping into the, the actual data models. The Gen Pilots map to the contact point email, the contact point phone, the individual, and the party identifiers. So what we're gonna be looking at in the next video is we're gonna be seeing how to take this map data and do um, the identity resolutions. Now I know this can be a lot of steps. We brought in our data through Amazon. We've created these data lake objects. Now what we're doing, so you have your data streams going into your data lake, and then you have your target data model objects. These are the, the model that supersedes and everything pull, pools into. So we've shown how we're mapping into there, and one key element of that is the party object. So we're mapping into the party object for the IDs. We're grouping our contact point emails, our contact point phones. We have our individual. And now the next big step is how do we create the unified individual? And that's where we're going. We want to create that unified individual. And then from there, we can start tracking insights and doing segmentation and then even doing key activations. But right now we're going from ingesting the data and then we're matching it by the party. We're getting ready to create that unified individual. We're almost there. And I hope this is helpful. So I hope you're getting these interim steps, setting up the party. Join me again, same bat time, same bat channel. And we're gonna keep moving forward. Hope you're having a great day.